A reading from our gospel text. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If there's one thing that I've learned in ten years of being a pastor, it's this. When there's a banquet, you go to it. Especially here at Augustana, where our banquets are legendary. Our potlucks are part of our identity. It's built into the very fabric of our existence. I don't need to tell you that. And if there's a banquet that's thrown for you, as you so kindly did for me in between the services, you go to it. If you don't go, you will be missed. People will be angry. But they will never forget that you did not go to the banquet. So, in the, not to sound flippant or anything, but in the banquet of life, we have this invitation. Now there's a, there are banquets and then there are banquets. There are banquets in terms of sumptuous feasts and there are banquets where we eat of the food that is not healthy for us. There is liver mush and there is McDonald's. Obviously liver mush is the food of kings. So you don't go to McDonald's when you can have liver mush. That's the point. But everybody has to eat. Everyone has to eat. It's kind of like this. Everyone is a theologian. Everyone. You're either a good one or you're a bad one. Atheists are theologians. They're just really bad ones. And so it is for food. Everyone eats, but not everyone eats well. Not everyone eats what they should eat. The world eats the things of death. The Christian comes to the banquet and eats the meal of life. I look at our text, our gospel text. The master of the house gave three specific invitations. One had to go because he bought five yoke of oxen, you know, like you do. The other bought a field and had to go see it. And notice that those two asked to be excused. It's very interesting because the third one doesn't. I can't tell you why. But that always jumps out at me. I have, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. I don't care if you excuse me or not. Well, it doesn't really matter because the master of the house gets angry and he goes and he says, go out into the streets and bring me those who are hungry for my food. This is also true for the Israel. Christ came first for the Jews and then for the Gentiles. I tell you this often, but there are actually two commissions. There's the great one that we always talk about, and there is the first one that we don't always talk about. The first one, Jesus says to, to the, to the uh, 72 to go to the Jews and not to the Gentiles. Go to them and tell them that the Messiah has come. Well, when they came back, they had no one. They had no one. The builder rejected the cornerstone. The Jews said, this is not our Savior. We must continue to wait. And so then what happened? Then we get to the Great Commission. Go into all nations baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And here's the neat thing. The Greek word for that, nation, is always, mis it's always mistranslated. The Greek word for that is ethne, meaning ethnic, meaning 
a group of people, not lines in the sand. He didn't say, go into Connecticut. He said, go to the Gentiles and baptize them and bring them into the fold. See, I have a banquet. I have a banquet for these people. I have a banquet. And who does he invite? This is the comfort of all comforts. He invites the poor, the cripple, the blind, and the lame. In other words, the sinner. Bring me the sinner. For those who believe that their works can save them, let them eat the, the, the food of death. For I give the food of life. Bring me who you have. Bring me what you have left. What do you have? Well, we've only got these poor and crippled people. All means all. But we only saw some blind and, and lame people. You don't want them in your house. All means all. Sir, we've done what you've added. We have the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. What should we do now because we've got more room? Fill it. Fill it up. Go into the highways and the hedges, as the old hymn says. Compel the people that they need to come in that my house may be filled. This house should be filled. On the other side of COVID, it will be. Come fill the house of the Master. Come fill the house of Christ. Because here the banquet is on the altar. Here the banquet is for the forgiveness of sins. Here the banquet that is given is not banquet of McDonald's or even liver mush. It's the bread from heaven. And let us not uh, complain like the Israel, Israelites who say we hate this loathsome food that magically rains down from heaven every morning and is free of labor and cost. Because what is free of labor and cost to you? Costs someone else quite a bit. The food that we eat today that's free to you was bought by the holy, innocent, and precious blood of Christ. Everything is paid for and nothing is free except in God. In God, there is free gifts. There are always free gifts. And this free gift is this. This is my body. This is my blood. Eat it, drink it, leave and live. Come back next Sunday. Fill this house. Receive the body and blood of Christ again and again and again and again. For I tell you, there are those who were invited who will never taste the banquet of Christ. As it is, let us do so. Let us taste of the medicine of immortality. Let us taste together as family and let us love one another fervently. For what is free to you in the gift that Christ gives, that costed him his very life, we should be that servant who goes out to the highway and the hedges and says, come, fill the house of my master. There's always room for more. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.